You're writing a survey question and start to ask yourself, how should users respond to this question? Should they write a response? Should they respond with yes or no? Or should they rate something? Choosing the right response options isn't just a formatting decision. It affects the quality of the data you get back. In this video, we'll discuss a popular response scale option, the semantic differential scale. A semantic differential scale asks participants to rate a product, experience, or interface along a set of bipolar adjectives, such as interesting versus boring, or clear versus unclear. It typically uses a seven-point scale, but five-point and nine-point scales can be used, depending on how much detail you're looking for. And in most cases, only the two endpoints are labeled, while the points in between remain unlabeled. A classic example of a semantic differential scale is the single ease question. It asks participants to rate their attitude toward a task, often using a seven-point scale with two ends labeled very difficult and very easy. Semantic differential scales are powerful in UX research because they capture nuance. They measure subtle differences in the intensity and direction of attitudes, not just whether people like or dislike something. Semantic differential scales also help reduce something called acquiescence bias. That's when people agree with statements just to be polite, not because they truly mean it. With Likert scales, you're often asked how much you agree or disagree with a statement, and it's easy to just keep hitting agree. But with semantic differential scales, you're choosing between two opposite adjectives like easy versus difficult. That forces people to think more carefully and gives you more reliable feedback. However, one weakness of semantic differential scales is that they place a high cognitive load on respondents. Because only the endpoints are labeled, while the intermediate points are unlabeled, respondents must interpret the meaning of each scale point themselves, which can increase the mental effort needed to respond accurately. Another weakness is that semantic differential scales are in a good fit for every situation. Some concepts, especially complex behaviors or specific statements, are difficult to reduce to simple adjective pairs without changing the meaning of what you're measuring. Let's look at an example. The statement, my organization uses quantitative UX metrics, is a simple fact. It doesn't describe a feeling or opinion that you can easily place between two opposite adjectives like effective and ineffective. If you tried to force it into a scale like that, you'd end up changing what the question is really asking and lose the meaning in the process. Now, there are a few best practices to keep in mind when designing semantic differential scales. First, ensure your bipolar adjectives are true opposites. Examples of true opposites include helpful versus unhelpful, visually appealing versus visually unappealing, or organized versus disorganized. Avoid unclear pairings like simple versus beautiful or cheap versus professional. Second, use simple and familiar language. Choose adjectives your participant will easily understand. Instead of saying efficacious versus inefficacious, choose a simpler and more familiar version, such as effective versus ineffective. If you want to measure how your users perceive your product or interface with precision and nuance, Consider adding semantic differential scales to your UX research toolkit. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more of our UX videos, take a look at these over here and consider subscribing to our channel. On our website, nngroup.com, you can access our free library of over 2,000 articles. You can also register for one of our UX courses that offer live, hands-on UX training.